Hi guys, I'm coming to you today with an eye infection, so if I happen to look exhausted, I'm not, I'm just not wearing any makeup. Also, I'm coming through on the Gus Gus content because <laughs> he's a very sleepy baby at the moment. Um, <laughs> I don't really have anything else to say about him other than that I was never a cat person before this and now I am a cat person to an absolutely embarrassing extent. Or it would be embarrassing if I cared enough to be embarrassed, but. I've been in a bind when it comes to making the kind of chatty, casual, here's what I'm about to read or here's what I've just read videos because I'm mostly reading client books, some of which I'm noting on Goodreads and most of which I'm not. And then other types of videos take more time and energy to prepare than I can give them at the moment. And I wish I were confident enough to speak off the cuff in, in those more involved videos, but I've never been able to shake the feeling that I'd be wasting your time to do so. That, I don't know, there's so many other videos you could be watching, let alone other things you could be doing with the time that you're spending with my channel. And I just always have wanted to give a, a digested and, and clearly laid out version of my thoughts to you. And also other people can speak more <laughs> extemporaneously than I can, but I've never been great at that. I've always needed time to mull things over and really come to understand what I'm thinking and feeling. I have been taking baby steps the end of last year to the beginning of this year, as you might have noticed with making <laughs> chattier videos. And today I'm just here for a quick one about the general shape of my reading year. I'll be getting into more specifics after the London Fair. I can't tell you the full list of things that I am planning to do after the London Fair, including exercising and being a real person, but videos are on, on the list, okay? Uh, but the general shape of my year, you know, I do have some some plans and some things that I've noticed about where my interest has, has gone when it comes to different genres and things. So 2020 is gonna be TBR heavy for me. I know that having a large physical TBR is not inherently anxiety inducing for a lot of people, but it is for me for whatever reason and I wish it weren't the case. I've tried to talk and logic myself out of it, but talk and logic only have a certain amount of influence <laughs> in any human life, okay? So um, I think part of the reason I don't like where my TBR is now, even though it's it's much smaller than a lot of other booktubers, but it's it's that it feels like a remnant of my previous circumstances and not a reflection on my current life. So for context, let's go back to the very beginning. I, When I was growing up, I used the library and local bookstores pretty much interchangeably. Um, I mostly got gifted bookstore books for, you know, different holidays and birthdays and such. And went to the library most weeks with my family and I didn't really think much of it. I just loved them both. Then when I went away to college, I didn't read for fun <laughs> during that period. Um, and after college is when things changed for me because I was living abroad for a few years and was exclusively buying books on my Kindle. I wasn't living in English speaking countries. And then when I came back to the US and was living in my parents' town for a period of time when I was not entirely unemployed, but didn't have a full-time position. Um, you know, I still loved my local library, but it didn't have the contemporary releases that I was so obsessed with at the time. And, and I got into the habit of buying books and that was my way of accessing them. But now I live in New York City and uh, apart from being seriously strapped for cash, I wave hello to the lions in the front of the New York Public Library every day. And it, I have plenty of new releases that would be available to me. And actually it, it makes very little sense at, at this point for me to buy new releases that I'm not sure I'm gonna love. You know, I would so much rather go to the library, you know, just take the long wait times, eventually get those books, maybe after the hype has died down, which would be preferable to me in some cases anyway. Uh, and then any of those books that I ended up loving, I could just buy, afterwards. Um, so that aspect of my reading has changed a lot. There's nothing naturally, you know, in conflict about having a large physical TBR in your home and also using your local library. Like, there's nothing in conflict. It feels weird to me <laughs> for my situation personally, and I can't explain why. It just does. I feel strained getting books out of the library when I have books that I've owned for several years 
at my fingertips when I roll out of bed that I have never bothered to open. So I, I want to get to a point, first of all, where I own very few books so that I can be a more regular library user, even though, as I've said, nothing is actually holding me back from that other than my own broken brain. But I also think that having access to so many books at the New York Public Library and also, you know, that excited, buzzy feeling of, of when you first hold a book in your hands, whether you've bought it or it's from the library, that, that that excitement can often be deceiving. And I say that because just recently I finished How I Came to Know Fish by Ota Pavel. It was one of the longest standing books my TBR had owned it since 2016. This is probably my favorite book that I've read so far this year. It is a simple, beautiful memoir of some of the author's most treasured memories of his his childhood before and during the Second World War in Czechoslovakia. I I just loved it and I don't really cry at books, but I did feel that that swelling of emotion at the end of this one and nothing about it is counterfeit or manipulative or attempting grand things, but it gets to the heart of, of so many of the most important human things, I think, in an oblique way. And it was sitting on my shelf for four years, people, four years. And if I only followed, you know, oh, like my mood reading or, you know, I just feel like exploring this thing now and I'm going to buy 10 books on that and ignore the books I already own, then I wouldn't have picked this one up, <laughs> you know? And who knows, maybe two years from now, I would have looked at it and said, oh, I've owned you for so long and I've never felt like reading you. Guess I'm going to unhaul. And at this point, I have taken a careful look at all the books that are on my shelf in, in my bedroom. And it is a carefully curated selection at this point. I want to read all of them. And they deserve that time and care and, and attention that I was willing to give them when I first bought them. And some of them, if not many of them, will be better reading experiences than things that happen to catch my eye at any given moment. So that is part of the reason that reading my TBR is important to me. I also have a fantasy of living with a zero TBR. I know many of you probably follow Sophie's channel from Portal on the Pages, and she got to a zero TBR several years ago and has kept a small TBR ever since. And I just think I would love that, that I would love to be able to follow my obsessions. I've, I've talked about that uh, in previous years, you know, where I, having so many different kinds of books at any one time, I feel the pressure to jump around amongst them and not stay too immersed in any time period or any author or whatever. And if I had a, a limited TBR, you know, 10 to 20 books at any one time, I would feel much more comfortable just reading five books on any given subject. And there are specific things I'd, I'd be interested in in pursuing in that fashion. One of them is to read Central and Eastern European books, whether those are from authors from those countries or books that are set in those countries or, or nonfiction about that region. I, I would just love to go through a period of two or three months where I just read those kinds of books. Um, I also have interest in, in getting the, um, the Robert Alter uh, translations of the Hebrew Bible and just immersing myself in them and then reading biblical adjacent books, books that talk about analyzing the text in, in various ways and then fiction adaptations of the Hebrew Bible and then going on to the New Testament and finding a translation that really works for me. I, I would love for that to be a one or two month project of its own where I don't feel all the voices of the books that I've already bought clamoring for my attention. Um, I would love to continue exploring the Greeks, you know, go through a period where I reread Sophocles and Aeschylus and finally get to Euripides and Aristophanes and, and these other Greek playwrights that I've been wanting to read for so many years. And having a TBR for whatever reason holds me back from, you know, pursuing those interests fully, you know, to the hilt. After London, and I hope soon after London, but you guys know not to trust me at this point, I will be filming a, a quick sort of bookshelf tour. I don't I have like two bookshelves in my bedroom. That's all that can fit. But I'll show you those shelves and I have things separated into read and unread. Um, and I'll take you through and, and talk more specifically about my goals for this year. But I've been strict in the early part of the year that unless I've read, okay, that was a 
are going to be a convoluted way of expressing that. Um, I have to read three books from my pre-2020 TBR for every one book that I buy. And so because I've only read five books from my pre-2020 TBR, I have only bought one book in January and February. And it feels great, honestly. I, I feel like, I don't know, the control over myself. Self-control, that's what people call that. People who have it have more cause to use that expression, which is why it comes to them more easily, I guess. Beyond the, the vicissitudes of my TBR struggles, my self-imposed TBR struggles, um, I have found myself gravitating so much more toward nonfiction in the second half of last year and the, the first part of this year. And memoirs to some extent, but much more so biography, history, nature, science. I have been looking into topic-based nonfiction and I have a list of something like 25 books that I've wanted to read for at least the last year and a half. And just looking at that list makes me you know, burn to read them. Um, but I think unlike with contemporary releases for fiction, I'm much more inclined to buy and, and start my own personal library of nonfiction in a way that I don't have currently because my past reading habits were so fiction heavy. Um, so that is something to I don't know, look forward to you on my channel if you're so inclined that I'll be talking about a lot of these, you know, substantive books and I'm, I'm so excited about it. And then I have a confession to make and it feels so weird to be saying this, but I have felt really uninspired by a lot of contemporary fiction recently. And by recently, I'm I mean over the past year or so that I have just become less and less beguiled by it. And I would describe myself as beguiled previously that I just was drawn to contemporary fiction. And now I don't know if it's a symptom of working in the industry and of knowing people who end up writing those, you know, things on the book jacket or the back of a book and you know, descriptions, that's the word I was looking for. Clearly I shouldn't be given the power to read anything with <laughs> this facility of speech. But it's not that those editors are much more likely editorial assistants aren't good writers, that they can't be very persuasive about the books they're working on, but there is something so formulaic about book jacket copy and it is just deflating to read it and, and feel the tacked on adjectives and the hyperbole and the you know, fiddling around with what the plot really is. And I, I just find it, I know that the book jacket copy is not the book, right? That's one of the points that I'm making here. But the, the end result is that I read any description of a novel and just don't feel like reading it. I, nothing about it is interesting to me. I don't care how powerful it is. I don't care how compelling it is or that if it's a short story collection, there's this weird story and then this weird story and then this weird story. Like, why should I care? And so, so much of my fiction reading now is dependent on recommendations from people I trust who have vetted those books. And it has very little to do with buzz. I'm, I'm so just not persuaded by by buzz anymore in a way that I clearly was in earlier years on this channel. And I'm not, you know, saying that that's a worse way to read or or less true in some way, but this is just where I am now. And I, I have to face it that I am much more excited about nonfiction and the whole fiction world is just exhausting me at the moment. Like, why can nobody write these book jackets in a way that's genuine that feels like anything that a reader would say to another reader you know not that this is the next unforgettable novel it is not I mean, you guys have heard me complain about that before i'll i'll spare you essentially what i've i've taken a long time to say at this point is that 2020 is very much a building year for me and i'm i'm setting myself up for an amazing 2021 a 2021 where i have close to a zero tbr i am reading a ton of nonfiction. i am following my obsessions and I'm regularly using my library. That would be amazing. That's exactly what I want. Um, and all that's standing between me and doing that completely guilt-free is my TBR, which contains a lot of great books and which I will enjoy reading throughout this year. So that in its own way is something to look forward to. 
that is the shape of my hair. You guys, I'm unreasonably fascinated with anything to do with people's reading goals or their TBRs or whether they're more interested in fiction or nonfiction or equally interested in both at any given time. So just leave all of the information about you below. Um, I read every single comment and I create responses in my head and then I forget that I haven't responded. I'm one of those terrible people who you text and then thinks has responded and hasn't. So I apologize for all of that and I will do better. Um, she says about so many things, including this thing. But anyway, the point is that I absolutely love hearing about your reading lives. Um, and it's really, it's a gift to have a window into them. So leave any of your thoughts below and I will see you hopefully soon for another video. <laughs> you guys, he's such a nugget. Oh, I know. Okay. I'm about to put you back down. <laughs> I'm just too selfish and I love you so much and I want you to be on camera so that when you weigh four times as much as you do now, which is the projected amount, folks, he's going to be a chunk and we can all look back on this time with some affection, right?